Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Straight Talk. Our guest is Mr. Andy Kwok, the captain of the Hong Kong Golf Club. Mr. Kwok is also a board member of the Hong Kong Golf Association and is actively involved with several youth-related associations, including being chairman of the Hong Kong Award for Young People and a committee member of the Youth Development Commission. As a captain of the Hong Kong Golf Club, Andy is going to tell us if the game of golf is only for the rich in our community. Before we proceed, I should declare my membership with the Hong Kong Golf Club. However, as host, I will remain objective throughout our discussion of this topic. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Eugene. So, Captain, um, like many people have said to me before, if you want to become a member of a golf club, you could have quite a long wait. I did wait for way over 25 years. I've always wanted to know, why is it taking so long? Well, I think the most important issue is demand is very high and um, because of the limited facilities that we have in Hong Kong, hence the long waiting list for um, members, mm. uh, people who want to get a membership at any of the golf clubs in Hong Kong. Right. So I understand the, the, the club has a few courses. Why can't we take more, more members so the wait will be that's a lot shorter? I mean, 20 odd years is a very long time. It is, unfortunately. Um, we have three courses at our funding uh, site and um, capacity is limited, as you know. And right now we have th around 3,000 membership plus their spouses and children, so roughly around 8,000 golfers in our, in our membership. And, and please bear in mind, um, we actually open up over 40% of our availability tea times to the general public. So, and we don't want to deprive public from have, gaining access into the club and playing golf. So, um, so because of that, so um, unfortunately, um, we cannot uh, receive too many members uh, all at once, and hence the long waiting time. Right. Captain, I must confess, the reason why I still waited over the 20 odd years, because to, to most golfers, it is still the most economical course and also it has the one that has the most history. There are other courses in Hong Kong, but it, it's, it costs a lot more. Um, but there's also another issue that I'm sure many viewers who are golfers is going to ask you, why is it, taking, why is it so difficult to book a tea time? Because tea time meaning being able to, to play off the golf. Um, people have to wait a week before to book a course and they have to be in, pre in person, like 6.45 in the morning, or they get into the app, which through the app, all the spaces is gone within seconds. So is there anything you can do about that? Well, as I said, demand is extremely high, especially um, since COVID-19. Um, I think golf has become even more popular than, than before. Um, it is a non-contact sport, and um, people think that you know, it's good to go outside, go, go outdoor for sports. Mm -hmm. So demand is extremely high. And unfortunately, um, we only have six and a half private golf courses in Hong Kong, plus the three um, public courses at Khao Sai Chao. So with that high demand, um, tea time is hard to get and is uh, very highly sought after. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess um, we're trying to fine tune the system, but um, I think the, you know, the, um, the demand, um, well, I think we just have, we just need more facilities, if you ask me, to, in order to resolve this for the long run. Right, Andy, um, there's also people believing, right. people who play at the Hong Kong Golf Club are extremely rich because they're saying that um, they have to pay over $10 million to get as a member. Is that true? No, well, that's a total misconception, I think, that um, we have in the public. Um, in fact, I think um, we are actually one of the most, uh, the, one of the cheapest um, private golf clubs uh, in Hong Kong, if not around the region. Um, uh, individual membership will cost around, which under $400,000 to join. But because of the waiting time, I think uh, that's something that you know, we'll have to endure. Uh, it's only the, uh, the very few Normandy membership, which hold by the large conglomerates and multinational companies in Hong Kong, that's, uh, that's the price that you're talking about, over like, you know, $10, $10 million. Right. And the difference is they can actually transfer uh, the Normandy players to um, any of their staff. So um, this is actually one of the, um, the fringe benefits that they offer to their uh, senior executive uh, as part of the compensation package to attract them, to attract this like in, talents to come to Hong Kong. 
Right, but the individual membership cannot be transferred. Unfortunately, individual membership cannot be transferred. Right. I know some other clubs which have nominee memberships. They do have this uh, privilege for the members to be able to to, uh, to transfer off on the commercial market, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Different clubs has um, different arrangement in terms of their membership. And but for the Hong Kong Golf Club, all our individual membership, which represent over 90% of our total members, uh, or individual which pay who paid, um, just like you, around three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars to join, yeah. and as for the as for life, but unfortunately, it's not transferable. Right. So, how big is the um, golfing community in Hong Kong? I mean, you said that we have like six and a half courses plus three in the in the public arena. So, so there's like ten golf courses. So, it sounds like I mean, there's quite a number of golf courses. So, how how big is the population? Well, I think the latest population uh, for active golfers is around 100,000 in Hong Kong. Um, if you compare us with, um, say, like of Singapore, um, I think which has around 80,000 uh, active golfers, but they have doubled the, doubled the number of um, golf courses compared to us. Mm -hmm. So that hence also the high demand and, and compared to supply. Uh, and hence the long wait in membership as well as you know the hard to get tea times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, you just you just said that there are quite a number of golfers in Hong Kong, and but people still feel that it's still a very small proportion of the community, so called the privileged or as the title says for the rich. Do you agree? Well, again, this is a total misconception. In fact, I think golf around the world uh, is actually one of the top ten most popular sports. And um, I think golf in Hong Kong is, is growing and is now, I think, also, also one of the more popular sports in Hong Kong. And not just playing in Hong Kong, I think people, it's a sport that people travel around the world to play. So we receive a lot of tourists and a lot of um, um, businessmen when they're in Hong Kong um, coming to our course to play. And uh, we see a lot of um, our Hong Kong people traveling around the world to play golf as well. So no, it's ever increasing mm -hmm. in terms of popularity. Right, but in terms of how about the rest of Asia or even the US or the UK, I mean, how popular is golf? Very popular. Um, I think recently you, you, you see that even in the, the desert climate countries such as um, in the UAE, in Dubai, or in Saudi Arabia, um, they are investing multi-billion dollars in, in irrigation, in, in um, building new golf courses because they see that this is a sport, uh, a recreation that will attract tourists, attract people coming to the country. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's going to be it's ever growing and it's going to be a huge industry going forward. Right. So just now you mentioned that if somebody wants to become a member, if they've waited for like 20 or 30 yeah. years, um, they still have to pay Although, I mean, under $400,000 isn't that, that such a big amount for joining a, a private club, but it's still an amount. So why does it cost so much to run the golf course? Can it be cheaper, so they, is it more accessible for people who have lined it for 20 odd years? Well, I think um, it would definitely be a little bit cheaper if we have more uh, facilities available in Hong Kong. Mm. But also bear in mind, um, to run a golf course is actually a very expensive um, exercise. Um, we have a dedicated teams of um, greenkeepers, agronomists that's helped to take care of um, the course. Uh, and, and it's a very highly skilled people um, because we have, very diff uh, we have different types of grass around the course, you know, from the greens to fairways to, um, to the roughs. Uh, each course is slightly different. And we have um, tens of thousands of trees that require special cares you know, every day. So um, hence, uh, the very large number of uh, manpower that's needed to maintain such a beautiful and world-renowned golf course that we have in Hong Kong. All right, some said Lake. that um, the golf course is a symbol of Hong Kong society's class divide. I know they're not particularly saying there is one particular golf club, but what is your response to that? Well, another misconception, I say. Um, actually, in, on the contrary, I think golf actually helped to create a harmonious society. Um, well, I think this is one of the very few sports that uh, is inclusive, that all people from all ages, skills, and gender can play together, all in, on the same tee. Mm -hmm. So on that, I think, um, yeah, I think we need more, we need to promote golf right. for, for a more harmonious society in Hong Kong. Right, um, uh, Andy, yeah. as we, when we first introduced you, you're also a member of the Golf Association. That's right. So I'm yes. sure you're in a position to, to tell the viewers, what is the standard of golf now in Hong Kong as compared to 
Asia or even the world? Oh, I think uh, through years of um, hard work and dedication from, like, from funding, for example, um, over 70% of the um, Hong Kong Golf Association's training and competitions were played uh, on our ground. And because of the availability of, um, of play for, the, for our junior players, I think we're seeing great results re in recent years. Uh, for example, earlier this year, um, we see a Hong Kong Brad Tai Chi Ko uh, winning a first ever Asian tour event, the World City Championship in Hong Kong. Right. And obviously before that, we have um, Tiffany Chan, uh, the Olympian, um, very first Hong Kong female golfers um, playing, now playing in the LPGA circuit in, mm -hmm. the, in the United States. And, um, and also we have a lot of um, great junior having, achieving great results, um, such as Ariana Lau, who just won the uh, Asia Pacific uh, Golf Confederation Junior Championship. Right. So uh, we're actually seeing, you know, uh, the fruits are there and uh, now it's the time to harvest. So I think um, Hong Kong providing, you know, we have enough facilities, um, our, you know, our juniors yeah. will flourish in the international golfing scene. Right, Andy, let's take a break now and viewers, stay with us, we will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We have been talking with Andy Kwok about golf in Hong Kong, who plays golf and where do they play, the development of golf in Hong Kong and whether golf is only for the rich. So, Captain, you have um, told us some background of the golf scene in Hong Kong. You just told us that we've got some very good juniors. But how about our courses? I mean, people who have travelled overseas, we heard of the St Andrews links in Scotland. Right. So how does Hong Kong compare to that? I mean, I'm sure we are, we're nowhere close with the history, but um, do we have anything that is similar in Hong Kong? Well, first of all, I think as uh, Hong Kong, I think we should be very proud uh, that Hong Kong has one of the oldest golf courses in Asia, uh, our old course at Fen Ling. Uh, it is dated back uh, to 1911, so over 110 years old. Um, it's actually um, one of the very first golf courses outside Scotland. Now, obviously, the, the origin of golf is from Scotland, but um, outside that, I mean, even the oldest golf course, say, in um, America is around 1880s, so right. pretty similar. Uh, in terms of time to, um, you know, our old course. Right. Uh, so we should be very proud. Right. On the Hong Kong uh, Golf Club website, you have quoted Peter Thompson, the five-time Open Championship winner, as saying, Hong Kong Golf Club is an incredibly special place in the world of golf. Not only is it historically important, its courses, notably the old course, are uh, architectural germs that have been laid out over pristine and ancient terrain. But, and also its role as a focal point for all Hong Kong golf cannot be understated. So basically it's saying how important is the old course. So why yes. old course is so important? First, when they first built um, in the old days, uh, we don't have large equipments to build golf courses, unlike, you know, recent in, in, unlike today. So um, the course is built along the terrain and landscape that w that's already, already there. So, um, and then, so we have all the ancient graves and trees surrounding the golf course. Um, so this is very rare, uh, even if you, if you go to anywhere else in, 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 in the modern days, golf courses like in America or in, in Thailand, for example. So, um, you know, to be to playing alongside a 400-year-old grave, I mean, this is mm. something of an experience for all golfers. Yes, yeah. right. As we all know, Fanning is about to have eight holes taken away from the old course. So what difference is that going to make, given that, there are two, as you said earlier, that there, are, there are two other courses anyway? So can't golfers just use the other two golf courses? Uh, it would be detrimental to the game of golf if eight holes are to be taken away. Um, because knowing that without eight holes, we basically lose a course, not just eight holes. Because a competitive round of golf is played over 18 holes. So without any of the eight holes, we basically will not be able to complete a round of golf on the old course. So with the remaining two courses left in Fun Ling, um, bear in mind we need uh, maintenance um, every now and then. So one of the courses has to, has to close for maintenance. So th technically, there will only be one course left you know, during maintenance day uh, or the alternative, or alternate days for maintenance for the other course. So um, the availability of um, play for members and the general public will be largely affected 
So um, we really hope that um, we can continue to use the old course uh, for golf, which is for the best benefit uh, of, for Hong Kong. All right. Our chief executive, Mr. John Lee, uh, I think last week said that um, the, 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 the actual work will continue to uh, reclaim the, the eight holes of golf courses and the international events can still go on. Um, would there be any issue from your point of view? Um, well, that all depends on whether the eight holes will remain as a championship golf course condition because this is uh, what the various tours uh, who wants, who is uh, in the pipeline of um, hosting mega sporting events in Hong Kong, including the uh, Aramco Team Series, which is a ladies' European tour event, um, and our Hong Kong Open International Series, which is an elevated um, Asian tour event. And also, um, we're in the, in the, in the shortlisted uh, process to, um, to, to win the Lift Golf Championship um, hosted, to be hosted in Hong Kong um, in 2024. Right. So with all these mega events in the pipeline, they all um, request that you know uh, they need all the land that we have uh, in funding in order for them to host um, big scale tournaments. Mm -hmm. Captain, I'm sure you being a golfer, you being a uh, captain of the Hong Kong Golf Club and also right. a member of the Hong Kong Golf Association, I'm sure it is in, in your blood that you want to promote golf in the region. But why do we need all these international events? Because after all, our Hong Kong people who's playing golf there they're what we are most concerned. Then why do we right. need these tournaments? Well, I think first of all, Hong Kong uh, post-COVID really need to have more uh, reasons for travelers to come to Hong Kong and to promote Hong Kong abroad as an international city, a, a mega event capital. So um, with these um, large scale mega sporting events that we are planning to bring to Hong Kong, it will really put Hong Kong in the world map as a mega event capital. Right. Um, and in terms of tournaments, I think the scale of the events that we're trying to bring over um, is, will be like twice or three times bigger than our usual Hong Kong Open. So uh, the amount of facilities that need, needed you know, for the course to support th these tournaments is enormous. So um, an average, um, obviously, a golf championship is played over 18 holes, 18 championship holes. So um, the tours select 18, the best, 18 best holes mm -hmm. uh, from our Eden and New course uh, to form this composite course for uh, championship play uh, during the event. But at the same time, because of the large scale that uh, they want, they want large scale for entertainment, for guest expo uh, engagement, for, for golf promotion. So they need the remaining course so to, for um, their VIPs to play during and before the tournament, as well as to host various golf related um, clinics uh, on, our, on our course. So, which means um, more, more support from the club is needed than ever before in order right. to host all these mega events. Right, just to ask you, just in case we lose this eight holes, um, but regularly there will be normal tournaments held over the year, like the Hong Kong Open in, um, in October and also yeah. other Asian tournaments in, say, like this year in March. Would that be also be affected? Um, then this will up, up to the tour organizers because um, after all, we cannot control whether they come to Hong Kong or they will choose a different venue uh, to host tournaments because as, as I said, golf is increasingly you know, popular uh, among, uh, amongst, like other, uh, among the, the public. Right. And um, there are many venues um, knocking on their doors wanting to host international tournaments in, mm -hmm. on, their, on their courts or in their city. Mm -hmm. So um, it is very competitive, mm -hmm. and um, Hong Kong, um, being you know the financial center, and being the uh, the uh, the door the, the entrance to um, you know the Greater mm -hmm. Bay Area and to China, it is still a, um, a priority for for mm -hmm. the tourists to come to Hong Kong. But if we cannot provide you know the facilities, the support that is needed, I think they might have to consider elsewhere. Right. I believe that um, in the recent town planning board hearing, the the organizers of the Aramco team series actually did appear and they said That's that right. Hong Kong would sh lose out on hosting international events should they lose the eight holes. So how serious are they and actually are they just helping the Hong Kong golf course or their golf club or they're just making a true statement in your view? Um, it, it is a true statement 
and it is their genuine concern because when they choose a uh, destination to host a tournament, uh, uh, they, they see it for the long run. So mm -hmm. they're not here just for a year or two. They want to continue to build on the momentum that's from, from one tournament to the other. So um, you know, to, in order to continue to host tournaments year in year out, it's very important for these tour, and it's a, and they are pouring in huge resources right. and investments into uh, into each tournament. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a great concern for them, and I hope the government listen. Right, Captain. Just before the show, we had a brief chat, yeah. and you told me the 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 lifts um, the lifts event, and also the Aramco Team Series actually had um, very important. Um, presence by the Middle East, the UAE, right? So yeah. how will you see if we have that or if we don't have that in terms of effect on the development of golf in Hong Kong? Well, I think um, while the government wants to foster a closer relationship uh, with the Middle East, especially with Saudi Arabia, uh, this would be a perfect opportunity um, for the government um, to bring uh, the um, Saudi Arabian delegates over to Hong Kong while we host the international events. Um, for example, a Ramco team series is um, title sponsored by the uh, Ramco company, which is the largest um, oil company in the world. And the, the ownership of the series is um, the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, which is also the backer of um, the Lift Golf events, uh, which is a men's event. And um, each tournament, for example, Lift Golf, each tournament, um, the organizers uh, are putting in um, over 60 million US dollars mm -hmm. in, into the tournament. Um, so uh, it's going to be a huge impact to Hong Kong if we can manage to host them uh, in, our, in our city. All right, Captain, we only have time for one last question. As you know, Hong Kong is well known for having the world's most unaffordable housing market. And inadequate housing supply is one of the biggest Hong Kong, uh, public issues of concern that the Chief Executive has said many times. So the government does have a responsibility to provide more housing. So do you think housing is more important than playing in this international event? My first quick question. And what would you say to our CE if he is listening right now? First of all, I think housing problem is a very important issue that Hong Kong needs to resolve. And uh, we are truly, uh, we are all su in supportive of Hong Kong government in um, finding lands to build more public housing and affordable housing. But is Hong Kong Golf Club the right place for public housing? I think this is the question that CE needs to consider, whether the golf clubs has a better value in, in promoting um, sports, in, in helping Hong Kong to connect with um, the world, uh, in bringing in um, international businessmen and delegates to Hong Kong to foster the, you know, the, the economic impact um, of Hong Kong, wouldn't that be bigger, that the bigger role that the golf club can play rather than just using a portion of our land for public housing? I'm sure um, land is of scarcity in Hong Kong, but there are many other options yeah. uh, that Hong Kong government can consider for mm -hmm. public housing. Right, I'm afraid that's all the time we have, and thank you, Andy, for sharing with us what golf is all about. We have certainly debunked the myth that golf is only for the rich, and you have also outlined how golf has and can continue to contribute to Hong Kong's success as a global city. Have a great evening and see you next week. Thank you.